everybody, and welcome to the Seattle Smurga production of the Pokemon Global League. Today we have a matchup between your Seattle Smurgles and the Detroit Cobra Lions. Alongside Dark Zekrom9898, I'm Bad and Caterpie, and Zekrom, we should have a pretty good matchup for you today to start off the season. Exactly, it's exactly what I was thinking. Looking at um, our Seattle Smeargles team, we have a Sylveon, a Regirock, a Kecleon, a Reuniclus, Skarmory, and a Pinsir that looks to be a little bit special if you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, we were talking about this before the recording. His pretty much main attacker is going to be the Megas Pinsir. Of course, Sylveon could be with specs, but it's really not speedy. And then you got Reuniclus, who is pretty much only a threat if you get the um, Trick Room up. Exactly, exactly. This is a very defensive team, and we're about to see how this is going to go down for them. So, of course, Hazard Setters could be Skarmory and Regirock, and Defogger would be Skarmory. And the Koba Lions are certainly packing some power. I did not expect this team. Yeah, this team seems a little bit of a threat towards uh, towards uh, the Seattle Smeargles here, but I think, I think, depending on who they lead with, we should see the Seattle Smeargles leading with Regirock if they may, if we made a good choice because uh, the Regirock seems to be able to defend a lot, if not all, of those Pokemon on the Koba Lions team. And uh, judging by the looks, Heatran is the only Hazard Setter. And Defogger could be Mence, depending on if it is the Defogging Mence. Usually you see Tailwind on that. But we're looking, Sylveon pretty much can't do anything against this team. Exactly, exactly. Unless we, uh, we might have brought the Sylveon as a threat for the Salamence to use it as switch bait to get the Salamence to switch out and do uh, something that, do a double switch maybe, get um, the Sylveon back and throw in something to defend the Pokemon that's coming out after that. I could see Reuniclus doing some work with some Focus Blasting and Shadow Balls on those top two Steel types, but yeah, yeah. it's going to be pretty difficult. Even Mega Pinsir doesn't have much of a field day unless it's packing close combat or EQ. Yeah, the Mega Pinsir, the only thing I can see it doing insane damage to would be that um, Primate, but let's see what the leads are going to be. We are predicting Regirock and the Heatran, I do believe. Yes, uh, that is what I was thinking as well. So, so let's see like, what we got. Looks like we're sending an Ashy, so is that the Heatran? No, it's the Primate! Okay! So going with the anime reference, Ash of course did have the Primate. So yeah, right off the bat, we're mistaken. And in comes the Rock. The Rock, yes. The Regirock seems to be the best best lead for this uh, situation. Get up all the Stealth Rocks and defend pretty much any hit coming in from this Primate. So we got two different Mons, a Gen 1 Mon and Gen 3 Legendary, two different animations. Regirock's kind of just chilling with Primate ready to go. Yes, that Primate looks very scary. Wouldn't want to meet that thing in the back of, dark <laughs> of, a, uh, back of a dark alley. So found this Miracles. I think Rocks are the best bet. It's just so important in weak play just to get that hazard and chip damage on those switches. Exactly, exactly. Those Rocks are going to do a lot of damage to that Heatran and the um, Salamence, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it should be 25% to Salamence on the switch in, and even the Raikou will take decent chip damage, and anything can help the Smeargles in this situation. Yeah, I was thinking the same exact thing. So, uh, let's just see now, what's going on here. With the Primate, here. it could be interesting what the Primate wants to do, because really a close combat can't touch a Regirock. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what the plan is here. Maybe, uh... Oh, it is using close combat, okay. So, so let's see what this does. Does about... Ooh. About 50%, around 65% for the um, Red Rock. So hopefully, hopefully we yes, we set up the Stealth Rocks. All right, sweet. So There's the Stealth in. Rock. That's gonna that go actually help. could have been a wasted opportunity because with the Primate lowering its defense with the close combat, an EQ probably could have came close to killing. Very true. If not killed, if we got a crit here. So, so now we'll see if this Primate just wants to go for the same moves. Smirgles could switch into Skarmory if they wanted to, or even Sylveon. Yes, I was thinking the same exact thing. So, what I'm thinking is the uh, Koba Lions are going to... Oh, they're withdrawing! Okay, I was gonna thinking they were going to stay in and go for the close combat. So let's see what they're bringing in. They're bringing in Rar. What is Rar? Rar is the Heatran! Okay! This Heatran. could could be a mistake depending on the item. Very true. Oh, we're switching out as well. So Heatran's brought in the, um... Heatran hit... Uh, got the... <laughs> God damn it. Going with the Skarmory. 
So, advantage right now is the Cobra Alliance. Not sure if he predicted the Skarmory or the Sylveon, but Heatran, of course, walls both of those mons. Exactly. And the Heatran looks like it would healed up some damage with that Leftovers, because that was not the amount of damage it had when it came in when it took from the Stealth Rocks. It is not Air Balloon Heatran, which you would see against normal EQ users, but we're seeing the Smeargles on the ropes having to withdraw once again. Sends in the Reunique list, Shiny Reunique list to add. Uh, so Rar is setting up the Stealth Rocks. Both fields have their hazards, or both teams have their hazards on the field now. Which is really not good for the Smeargle because anytime he goes into Skarm and wants to get a defog, that's an easy switch in by the Cobra Lions for Heatran or Raikou. Exactly. Exactly. So, uh, what I'm expecting here is the Heatran is either going to attack the Reuniclus or it's going to switch out into something that can take the Reuniclus hits. Oh, it's going to roar out, and so next Pokemon that is going to come in is going to take some chip damage from the Stealth Rocks, and it's going to be the Kecleon. Now I'm curious what the Smeargles went for, because Roar has negative priority. Yeah, I was, could, they could have gone for Trick Room. Does Trick Room have negative priority? I don't want to say it does. Hmm. So I'm not sure what it could have done for it to go last in the move bracket. Yeah, that was really interesting. Maybe they were going for something else like that. That may be something for you guys in the comments. Please post questions so we can ask the head coach of the Seattle Smeargles, Sketchy himself, in the post-game interview. Yes, please. Send in all of your comments and questions. We'd like to read it all. So we're going to use knockoff here, and that's going to knock off the leftover so the uh, Heatran can no longer heal up damage, but we are burned, so that's going to do a lot less damage than we were probably expecting. So right now for the Kecleon, the Smeargles are not in a good spot whatsoever, because this Kecleon really can't do anything. Yeah, so we're, it's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to get out of there and send in the Reuniclus again. Maybe we'll see what the Reuniclus had planned earlier in the battle. Now taking some chip damage. There's the Roar once again. Did not take rock damage, so that is Magic Guard Reuniclus. Yes, and we bring back the Kecleon. So Kecleon is taking more chip damage and possibly, yes, and more burn damage. So this Kecleon, I don't think is going to last much longer. Yeah, maybe just safe for the Smeargles to take their medicine, let Keck go down, and maybe bring in the Regirock to put pressure back on the Cobra Lions. Yes, yes. Oh, we're going to go for the Fake Out to flinch out the Heatran and stall it one more turn, see what's going to happen here. Take some more burn damage. So this Keck around pretty much has one turn left in it, depending on what the Heatran wants to do. Yes, and if the Heatran, I believe Kecleon should be faster than Heatran, especially if it's going for Roar. So this Kecleon might have one more hit point in before it goes out. Oh no, I was mistaken. The Heatran is faster. So there's a Lava Plume. That's a poor little dead Kecleon. Did he even get his chance to shine? All he did was knock off the Heatran's lefties. Exactly. So goes into Reuniclus. See what this Reuniclus has got to do now. Maybe, uh... I don't know what, maybe you're just gonna throw in a Shadow Ball or a Focus Blast. Yeah, it goes for the Focus Blast, but Ooh. it dodges the attack and uses the Roar, so something else is gonna take some more chip damage now. That was a very shocking play and could have easily changed the tide of this battle. Here's Wanda, nice little Fairy Odd Parents reference, but even the Sylveon can't do anything, because I don't even think Sylveon can get Focus Blast. I'm pretty sure it can so we'll see what's gonna happen here maybe we'll switch back out to see what the Seattle Smeargles want to do here maybe we're gonna protect stall or do something involved in that um, Hobo Lions are probably safe with going roar once again getting chip damage all over the place yeah that seems what they're trying to do here it seems like the Koba Lions are going for the uh, going for the chip damage to weaken their Pokemon the Seattle Smeargles Pokemon up so they can have easier kills and easier knockouts Probably what he's been praying for was getting the pincer in there so it takes 25% on the rocks. Yeah, that pincer is going to do a take a lot of damage from the rocks, especially after it mega evolves, if it does get that chance to. And really, he won't get the chance right now to switch in Skarm, because with the rocks, it's sturdy, it's null and void, so one lava plume would knock that out real quick. Exactly what I was thinking. That our Pokemon that we have a chance to switch into. Oh, they're withdrawing. Okay, what is? What are they sending out? They're sending out Comeback, and Comeback is the Aegislash. Okay, I like that nickname. That is a good nickname. <laughs> it looks like we went for the Protect as well, so that's what I was thinking we were gonna do. Just Protect all a little bit to get our health back. So then, uh, right back in a pickle. Should be interesting to see, as it's Lefty's Aegislash, if it is physical or special. 
Yeah, Aegis Slash usually run weakness policy, or was that... Was yeah, that... usually they do run weakness policy, and that was the lefties. Yeah, lefties, Aegis Slash. So I'm assuming it might be a defensive one, with King Shield and maybe... I don't know, Protect maybe? I don't know why you'd run King Shield and Protect, but... Let's see what we got. Stance change. Oh, so it's going on the offensive. And flash cannon. Get some. So my guess is it's King Shield, Flash Cannon. Probably seek the sword that it has there, and maybe Shadow Sneak. Uh, that that sounds like a pretty common set, but with the leftovers, it might throw you off a little bit. So we'll see what's going to happen here. I believe they were going for that Flash Cannon, hoping that Sylveon was going to stay in and get a lot of damage off on that. So they're withdrawing comeback now, because they I don't think they can do anything against this um, Skarmory, and they're going to send in Manny, who is the Raikou. So that's going to be a little taunting or uh, for the uh, Skarmory out here. Smurgle is one for the spikes. That was their perfect chance to get rid of those rocks, though, because the Raikou switching was pretty obvious in my books. Yeah, that I would have gone for the Defog as well, if we even have it here. Because I believe one layer of spikes, I know three is 25%, so one layer is pretty much six, maybe seven damage. Yeah, every little bit helps, but with leftovers in the, on the field, I'm not sure how much spikes is really going to do for you. So let's see what the Skarm wants to do. Revealed spikes, so we're not even sure if it has stealth rocks. For that matter. Yeah, let's see what's going on here. We're going to switch back into the rock so we can hopefully bait a switch out and take some damage without dealing too much out here and even the rock doesn't have good special defense and with that rock damage and the raikou setting up this combine now uh -oh. the smirgles are in a very tight situation because mega pincer does not get the extra speed on the mega evolve so i think the raikou outspeeds regular pincer yeah, it's this is going to be a bit of a tight situation to see if we can get the Seattle Smear Girls out of here. Uh, I'm not sure what we're planning on doing here because the Raikou with Calm Mind is very, very, very um, intimidating. I can go for Thunderbolt, it could go for multiple things that are just really um, detrimental to this team. Right, I wouldn't be surprised if this Raikou has Shadow Ball prepping and scouting for that Reuniclus in the pregame prep. Yeah, that, that Shadow Ball is going to do a lot of damage to that Reuniclus. It's not going to be able to take that very well, unless we set up maybe a light screen or something, but I don't know many, many Reuniclus that run light screen. Never know, could be very creative, or Nestor could have HP Grass on this Raikou just for this Regirock. Very true, very true. That's something else we got to really look out for, just in case. Uh, the, he does decide to do that because we do need to keep our physical walls as much as possible right now because they both are very damaged and they're going for another calm mine. So what is that? Plus two? Plus four? I think it's plus two. Yeah, plus two, plus two. But very risky if this Regirock goes for EQ. Which it did. Let's see what's going to happen here. Should come close to knocking it out. Did about, yeah, did about 65%. So hopefully if we can get another one off or maybe they're going to switch out into something else over there at the Koba Lions team. We'll see what's going to happen. We're gaining more health back on the field, so our Regirox slowly getting all the health back that it needs. But now this Raikou could have a field day. There's the T-Bolt. Let's see what it does. T-Bolt knocks out the Regirox. So I believe that is the first death for the game. Second one after Kecleon. Oh, that's right, Kecleon. Down. I forgot about Kecleon. <laughs> so we got Heatran and Raikou each with a kill. And if you're the Smurgles, there's really no safe switch. Not really. This, uh, like you said earlier, this Raikou might have Shadow Ball specking for this uh, Renuclus here. So let's see what's going to happen here. It's going for the Thunderbolt. See how much damage that does. Which proves no Shadow Ball. There's the Trick Room. So wow. maybe this Reuniclus can do something right now. But even so... That did a lot um, of damage. Unless this Reuniclus has Psyshock, I believe at plus two special defense, this Raikou can just eat something up. Yeah, this Raikou, I'm not sure what this Reuniclus can do. Like like you said, with the plus two special defense, it's pretty bulky right now. It's, can, it can sweep if uh, the Seattle Smeargles aren't very careful. So let's see, Reuniclus, 42%. It is Magic Guard, so he can't even swap out for the Regenerator. Yeah, that's a bit of a risky play there when running uh, Magic Guard. Although, you do not take any chip damage or any damage from 
uh, status ailments, you cannot heal unless you have leftovers on. So the Psy Shock does take out the Raikou, so the Raikou is now down, and hopefully there aren't any more major threats like that. See, and that was interesting on the Aegislash set, because if it has no speed investments as it comes in, Aegislash may outspeed because of the Trick Room. Yeah, that's it's really, really tricky. We're going to see what's going to happen here. That was the first death for the Koba Lions on the other team. And, or uh, like we mentioned earlier, Shadow Sneak on this Aegislash. Yeah, that Shadow Sneak is going to hit pretty hard, and the three Uniqueless may go down here. So we're going to see what's going to happen. Looks like both sides are thinking right now, trying to figure out what they're going to do. Or this Mirrorless may try to play it safe and go into Skarmory, hoping to eat a nut something. Yeah, I have no idea what's going to go on here. This is a pretty risky play. Oh, Renuclus is going to go for Recover. All right, so getting some health back. I believe that could be a pretty smart play, depending on what this uh, Aegislash wants to go for. It's going to go it's into... It's going on the tech, so I think a Shadow Ball is on its way. Yep, there goes the Shadow Ball. Hopefully this Renuclus can take it. Which it cannot. Ooh. Ooh, it's now 1-3 to three against the Seattle Smeargles. So let's see how we can come back from this. So we got Heatran killing Kecleon, Raikou killing the Regirock, and now Aegislash killing the Reuniclus. Trick Room is still up, so I think the only play really is Skarmory. Yeah, or we could bring in the Pinsir. Let's see what this Pinsir has um, planned. I think Pinsir takes a lot of chip damage from those stones, so we're going to see what's going to happen here. And I don't think he'll move first, but probably a King Shield is incoming. So Smeargles may try Risky and go for the Swords Dance. Yeah, if they're, if we predict the King Shield correctly and they go for the Swords Dance, looks like we're Mega Evolving, then I believe we're going to have some pretty easy killing time here. So now you pretty much got to keep this pincer in, because if you swap it back in, it's now 50%. As in comes the Shadow Ball. Which barely survives, goes for the Swords Dance. With the Trick Room still up, though, unless it goes away after this turn... I'm not sure what's going to happen here. Yeah, the Smeargles really need Trick Room to expire. Don't think they're going to get it. They did not. So Quick tough. Attack is definitely not taking out an Aegis Slash. Even with a plus two. So we may see... The Shadow Sneak. There's the Shadow Sneak. Looks like Aegis Slash is going to knock out two Pokemon here. Yep, Mega Pinsir goes down. So it is now one to four with two knockouts from the Aegis Slash. One from the Heatran and the other from the Raikou. It's always interesting with the league formats, if they're going to allow Ubers, if they're not, as the dimensions return to normal, and we're seeing why Aegislash is just a complete dominant monster in Pokemon. Yes, I remember when Aegislash went into Ubers, everyone was freaking out, and, and you can all see why now, especially if this one was weakness policy, which it isn't. So Smurros are on the ropes, they go for Roost, which could be very dangerous, depending on the move by the Aegislash. Aegislash goes for Shadow Ball, which I'm not sure how well the Skarmory's going to take it, personally. Does just over half, so I'm not sure if it could take a second one, as it the Skarm really, is really faster. Risky. The Skarmory should be faster, yes, but what can the Skarmory really do here? I, I, I can't think of anything that the Skarmory would be able to do to get enough damage off to be reliable on this Asia Slash here. I cannot imagine what this thing could do except maybe stall it out. We've seen Shadow Sneak, Shadow Ball, and Flash Cannon on this Asia Slash as it's going for Brave Bird. That's not going to do anything, I would think. Well, we are in attacking mode, so that did a little more than it would in defensive mode, but we did take the recoil damage, which isn't very right. Yep, that's going to knock us out now because the Shadow Ball did just below half, which is now going to finish it off. So that is... Three kills for Aegis Slash now. Only the Sylveon is left. And so it does not flash look cannon on the good. Horizon. So let's see if Sylveon can bring this thing back. Even if it can kill the Aegis Slash with maybe a Shadow Ball. He's just going to bring in Heatran. So it's pretty much game. Yeah, unless we're going to like maybe PP stall or Wish Protect it out. I'm not sure what much we can do. And it goes There's into Stance Change. Game. Yep. See what's gonna go for. Goes for King Shield. So there's like the King Shield. We might both be going for Protect here. No, it goes for Hyper Voice. Okay. But so if Hyper Voice is the best move on this lefty Sylveon, this Age of Slash is about to take it behind the Woodshed. Yeah, especially if that Hyper Voice didn't literally nothing to the Age of Slash. So we're gonna see what's gonna happen here. So the Smeargles will be going down five nothing. Hyper Voice doesn't even do anything. 
and go back into the flash cannon, which if does not kill would become very close. It comes very close. There's about I would say that's what seventy five percent. So we're looking at it. I would say about eighty. That hyper voice did not affect the Aegis Slash, which means this Sylveon was not pixelate. Yeah, this Sylveon must be. I'm not. What other Q charm, I Q believe. Charm, yeah. So maybe trying to catch a physical attack from the Mens and get it attracted. I'm not sure, but Aegis Slash finishes the job with four that's kills. A, that's a 5-0 victory for the Detroit Cobra Lions over the Seattle Smeargle. Matchup was just not there. Sketchy tried his best, but could not get it done. Zekrom, what are your final thoughts on this match? I think both teams played fair, but that Aegis Slash just, it's too strong, and I understand why it now, why it now is in Ubers. It's, that thing, with the Pokemon that the Smeargles brought, it just did not have much option. We couldn't do much about it. Uh, it was just healing too much, and the Pokemon that could take it out were knocked out early in the battle. That Kecleon maybe could have done something to it, hopefully, but that was killed very early on. So a tough week one loss for the Smurgles. They will be back next week. As a reminder, please leave questions in the comment section for the post-game interview for Sketchy. Um, he's Doug Zekrom on the Bandit Caterpie. We're signing out, and we hope to see you again next week. Peace out, everybody. Peace out, everybody.